Oh, Chase Elliott, 44 car. That's going to definitely be a backup car. You know what I'm seeing here, Jeff? It looks like when they go to qualifying trim and they try to pick it up a little bit, maybe we're just not quite there yet with the track. Well, yeah, I'm really curious to know what kind of you know tires Chase Elliott had on that car. Were they were they stickers? Think were they up to temperature? He had start just started his lap. He was half a lap into a run, Jeff, according to our scoring monitor. Just a little high. You see yeah, him off he gets turn. high. Get a little high right there. Gets very that similar. Wall. Very similar to what happened with uh, Eric Jones. He gets out wide. Boy, heavy contact to that inside wall with the nose. Yeah. Yep. He tries to save it, but makes contact with the right side, and then it comes around on him. I, I think we're, you know, we got to 10, 11 minutes here to go in practice. I think everybody's trying to get into qualifying oh. trim, get a qualifying run in, and uh, some of the cars are just not, okay. they don't he have was, the grip they need. He was more than a car width up and out of the groove there. And I think what's happening, the track has a lot of grip in it if you're in that groove, exactly. but there's very little room for air. Yeah. So we've got word that that was his first mock qualifying run. Uh, and we know that he was on his first lap. Yeah. When that happened, it turned two. All right, thanks for talking to us. Good luck. Thank you. Now, on Friday, every car had a chance to go through qualifying inspection once. Some went through multiple times. These nine drivers did not get through inspection in time to post a qualifying lap, so they earned starting spots due to their point standing position. Positions 32 to 40 and some big names there. Then, after the grid was set, three drivers will have to go to the back of the field. Casey Kane and Trevor Bain crashed after qualifying. They're in backup cars. Jimmy Johnson spun at the end of his qualifying lap, and because he cannot start the race on those flat-spotted tires, he had to change them, and his number 48 will have to go to the rear. 21-year-old Chase Elliott has scored more stage points than any other driver in the field, but that streak could be hard to run with today. Why? On Friday, he had a practice crash that forced the team to a backup car, and because they couldn't qualify, he's starting in the back. And his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, said, I'm not worried about my car or my driver. What I am concerned about is racing from the back to the front with all these cars on the edge. Wasn't quite the same. <laughs> All right, so the Richmond, what? 24 is in victory lane while the 24 brings out the caution here. Uh oh, what happened? I don't see any damage. I don't see any. So what happened? Whoa, well, now. Very, very you, seldom you do you spin not. out here and not hit anything, but you I do believe not get away with just it. did it. You just don't get away with that. <laughs> Caution flag for Chase Elliott with 23 minutes to go in cup practice. Prior to this weekend, in an effort to get all the cars off the top groove and back to the bottom, uh, NASCAR, or rather the track, Bristol Motor Speedway, used an old short track and drag racing trick. PJ1 track bike, formerly known as VHT. It's a resin-like compound sprayed on the track to increase grip. It took rubber, and a lot of the drivers spent practice racing right around the bottom. Uh, the left side tires will have an added uh, bit of that today. A three-foot wide strip was put down this morning to aid grip. And that helped drivers get around here really fast in practice, well, most of the time. Yeah, the, it, it's what we refer to as a grip strip. And let me tell you, it was a lot of grip down there, but if you missed it, you just see car after car go up and smack that outside wall. You just have a lot, not a lot of room here for recovery. You missed the grip strip, and there wasn't any grip up high early in practice. Even our poles that are got in trouble, uh, it's uh, going to be an interesting start, to say the least. And of those cars, only the 37 of Chris Buescher had to go to a backup car. The others have all been repaired. Well, now, since the final practice, we've had an Xfinity race, and we've had a day and a half of rain, Jeff. So what do we expect? And then the top group came in. To be good on the top, you've got to uh, have the car turning really good up there. They're anticipating that top coming in, but it has not come in yet. Now, Chase Elliott is still... Can't slow the car down. 
We are at lap 56. NASCAR's decree. Chase Elliott started second, pits from third, had a little contact in the left rear, so they'll pull the left rear, but no other changes for tires and fuel, Matt. Ryan Blaney skirted trouble on the grid when he had an equalized right front tire. He was able to legally swap the sticker for a sticker. His car, much on the tight side, cutting the corner uh, and then lose late exit. Meanwhile, the 42 of Larson, his car. Dylan Hart after he just won a die hard 500. What's the question, dude? <laughs> one by one, I know we've seen some things, and I've asked myself what could be more than this. And if you left me tomorrow, it is a be a race car driver someday it's a great sport i love it to death you know it's you know it's all i've ever known racing that's the young dale earnhardt jr and here's the 42 year old in his nationwide hendrick chevrolet starting 12th today and it's the first race since announcing on tuesday that this would be his final year as a driver start gravitating back towards the middle back down to the bottom I just, I just kind of like where Matt Kins is running. He has not gotten off that yellow line. No, he doesn't have to. He's got a good race car. And then you follow along here with Chase Elliott. He searched every square inch of this racetrack so far in this race, trying to find that groove that works best for him and gets the lap time. That's a good lap there. You're actually running Blaney down three cars ahead of you. Yeah, inside the car on that digital. Let's Here's the it. restart. Let's watch it again. There's the restart zone. Boy, I don't know. I mean, Finley, uh, he definitely he was, he was definitely one. ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he, he timed was. it perfectly. He did. And I don't know, maybe because the two oh, got, Matt got, got, got a cut tire. tire. He got a cut tire. Right rear looks like. Wow, led 164 right laps today. Running in 10th place, and now can't get to pit road. Can't get there. Vince? Boy, that's adding insult to injury. They had been running up front all day and then just had a bad pit stop, which uh, Matt teamed a uh, kick in the groin, and then they had that uh, issue with the tires. So it's gone from bad to worse for the 20 after a beautiful day early on. And remember, no interliner and the 24, Chase Elliott. So watch, the 20 gets to the outside of the 78. 24 is outside the 20. Looks like a little bit of, looked like the 78 was coming up, the 20 had to come up, and they just made contact. Ran out of room. And then, there's a little damage to the left front of Chase Elliott as well. He might have to come on pit road and fix that. So Matt Kenseth had been in the top five for 320 laps of this race. Hey, guys. Everybody put it, but I don't understand. A little unclear to some of these drivers if you need all four under that orange box, but I thought he did. Okay. Green right flag. On the edge. Teammates out front. Ooh. Oh, that's Ooh. not what Kyle Busch wanted to see. Is Kyle? Oh, three wides. Chase Elliott right behind the him. Bottom. Wow. They made it. Ooh, not yet. It's not over yet. We haven't come around yet. And we're all putting a big block on Stenhouse. My goodness, he's. These restarts are, I don't know, other than insane, they're just crazy. I'm gonna give it a little higher line. Contact back in there with the 21. Ryan Blaney just got a boot from Kurt Busch. Four wide into three, my goodness. Oh, no, oh. he cut it, he cut his bye, tire down. Bye, bye, Blaney. I think he cut his tire down. Yep. Stay up there, stop, 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 stay up there. 41, cut our left rear. They were not the wall for to go to the right side, right rear first. I'm surprised they made it that far. Yeah, there was no give there, but oh there was a lot God. of take. You know, the way these front fenders are flared out, they just seem to catch the edge of those tires, especially early in a run when the pressures are down. Eighth place here. Well, sidewall's pretty vulnerable with the low per air pressure. Then you just give it a little nudge. So Chase Elliott makes a little bit of contact to 41 and Kurt Bush. That sends him up into the left rear of Ryan Blaney, you can see Ryan trying his best to hold on to it. Uncontrolled tire, 
for the 24 of Chase Elliott. He goes to the back for the restart. Here we go. It'll be 19 to go. 19 laps to go in that 42 car. Out. The first five drivers stayed out. Here comes. Typically, Daytona and Talladega are playgrounds for the veterans. In the last 10 years, only Trevor Bain and Brad Keselowski won prior to their 100th Cup career start. Well, Chase Elliott, he's looking to add his name to that list. He came close last year, and he was just a couple laps shy at the Daytona 500. His plan today, get to the front quick and control the pack. Larry. Chase Elliott carrying one of Talladega's most famous names. His dad, Bill, holds the track record here. Many times voted NASCAR's most popular driver, 16 times, in fact. Chris Neville. And Mike, really, Chase Elliott just doing a lot of experiment today. He's been running high, he's been running low, kind of saying, uh, we're just trying to figure out where his car has speed. The upper lane just wasn't well organized when he's up there. Feels like the car is a little bit stronger down low, but he's also another driver that has been saying the car just moving around quite a bit when he's in the pack. So they did make an adjustment on that last stop. Getting her about tuned up. Yes. <laughs> so, Clayne Crawford, star of the Fox hit Lethal Weapon. He was involved in the pre race ceremonies today. He's hanging out in uh, Chase Elliott's pit. Or he's hanging out with the Hooters crew. You decide. <laughs> race fans, when Chase wins, you win. Visit Hooters24.com now. Look at that for number 14. And there it goes, there just out goes. of reach. You're only allowed so many men over the pit wall. Well, Vince, for most of the race, Chase Elliott has been stuck mid-pack. He's saying, I can't do anything because it's been three wide. Well, now he's out front. He's pretty happy with his race car. He said, back in the pack, it was a bit edgy, but as soon as he could get, get some clean air on that car, he said, I think we're going to have a fast race car. His uh, spotter, Eddie DeHunt, just told him, it's time oh, to be greedy. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, oh, there oh, we go. Oh. Here we go. Oh, upside, side, down. Upside. Well, AJ, that was a humdinger. Yes, it was, and that's uh, there he is upside down, and I hope, hope he's all right. I see him moving around in there. I don't think there's any issue with him. Yeah, you just can't push on the left side of that rear bumper. Well, you just can't keep pushing. He got into the 24 and just kept on pushing. Well, here is the initial contact. You see Chase's car yawed out just a tiny bit in the corner. And they got him loose. That's, that, that's the one. He was going to save it till that last little bump. I was just going to say, AJ, just be a little patient here. We got a little ways to go yet, and uh, you got a pretty good car. Wow. In a moment. This is amazing footage, folks. Incredible camera work. And just remember, there's a driver in every one of those cars. Watch it. Well, that's a long, slow roll for Almendinger. That and is. look, both those cars end up pretty much together along with the mess that was Logano's car. And Michael McDowell's. Harvick had damage in that. So did Trevor Bain, Eric Jones, Matt Kenseth, all involved. And as a driver, I, I've been upside down at Daytona one time and slid on my roof just like that. With sparks flying, and I was just hoping at the last second it was going to roll back over so I could get out. But uh, AJ's didn't do that. He was stuck upside down. Not a comforting feeling. That oil tank is right behind you. It's very possible for oil to start leaking out. You want to get out of there as fast as you can. Looks like there were only about a dozen cars who had a chance to evade to the inside and not get any damage in this. I'm watching that. Watching that green two car. I, I don't know. If He's just kind of following us through here. Not sure if he got any damage or not. Yeah, I think I saw him stop a little bit too soon as if he made contact. He may hit the outside wall. With Dale Jr. One outside, 77 outside. Keep coming, low, 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 Wow. Caution's out, caution's out. Let's show you this in real time. Talladega, world's fastest junkyard. Through there, I think the 13 just had bailed out because he felt like it was getting wild and it worked out for him. So maybe Ty can get it done. Thanks, Austin. 
All right, we're just getting word. Thank you very much for that. That Chase uh, Elliott in the 24 and Eric Jones in the 77 eliminated from the race because they were continuing to drive when the red flag came out. They had bigger problems than that, though, <laughs> Chris. That 24 car was not repairable, so he was just trying to get home. They were probably yeah, just trying to react to what was going on. Let's check back in with Chris Neville. It is what it is. We'll uh, you know, go on to the next week. Thanks, Joey. Well, last year in this race, we had 36 of the 40 cars that had some kind of damage. By the end of the race, we have at least 20 in the field so far today. And let's listen in. You saw the 24 car go into the air. And let's listen in on the radio communication of Chase Elliott. Was that my bad? No, that wasn't your bad. He just shoved you so hard, he got you twisted up. You get a lot of momentum from drafting from behind, and Chase came off that corner with a little bit more momentum than he had before, and it looked like maybe the car just stepped out a bit, and Almendinger hard on the gas into the back of Elliott, and that caused this crash. Kevin Harvick also caught up in this in the four car. Let's listen in to that transmission. He has split 15 laps in this race. Ali, that was close to being through there. Thought you made it. Couldn't tell who it was, and the 47 got out of the roof. I saw the 47 and the 24 roof numbers in my mirror. And speaking of A.J. Allmendinger in the 47, let's go back to Chris Neville. Yeah, boy, pretty scary moment on the back straightaway there. A.J. Allmendinger upside down. A.J., what happened there? Uh, just battling for the lead, you know. Uh, kind of the, the 18 and the 24 kind of were leading the, the two packs, and the four was just on me. And, uh, you know, once I got to chase... I got loose. I tried to, as we can see, I barely tapped him. Uh, and then I tried to get off him, and at that point it was too late. You know, just uh, one of those things, battling for the lead. And uh, the plan kind of went. We, we waited the back and, and uh, started moving forward there. And, and the way the pit cycles worked, we were up front, had a great restart, um, had the right guys pushing me. So I uh, can't thank everybody at a race team enough, and, and Kroger and Clicklist and everybody that's part of this. Um, hated that that happened. It's Talladega. I'm uh, not a big fan of it, but you're up front, you got a chance to go forward, and, and um, racing happens, I guess, here, if we call that. Good to see you're okay. Thanks, AJ. Not a big fan of it. Glad that AJ Almendinger is okay. Did he take enough responsibility, Michael, for triggering this? Well, you see the two of those guys discussing it. Uh, it's hard to say not being inside the car, but it looked like he got a lot of momentum on Chase off the corner. And generally, the only way that would happen is if Chase lost a little bit of traction. So you just you just wonder if that car turned a little bit on him. I'd be interesting to hear Chase's uh, opinion on what happened. But certainly there was contact from AJ into Chase, but I don't know what precipitated it. Well, and, and Almendinger said, I just tapped him. We saw drivers earlier at 200 miles an hour wiggle and save the situation, but in this case... That was unsavable. He was in a bad position right off the corner. The cars are already light there anyway. Yeah, all right, let's go back to Chris Neville, who's with Chase Elliott. Yeah, and Chase Elliott also out of the Infield Care Center. Chase, we just saw you and AJ talking. What were you guys talking about? Uh, he just apologized. I mean, I, I don't know uh, that it was really his fault per se. I mean, I, I think uh, he had a big run, and he kind of got to my bumper and just happened to be in a bad spot, kind of coming up off the corner and, and was skewed a little bit to my left rear. And, and when that happens, it just unloads these cars too much. But um, I appreciate everybody's hard work. Our, our Hooters Chevrolet was, was really good today. Uh, we were able to work our way up towards the front a, a couple times, got hung out a couple times, and, and finally made our way back forward. So really proud of that. Uh, hopefully we can carry some of this speed back to Daytona for the plate race in July and go get them next week at Kansas. Thanks, Chase. All right, 19 laps to go under the red flag now, reaching uh, 15 minutes. Kyle Busch, your leader, followed by Denny Hamlin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's head back. It's no accident that these drivers are able to climb out. And... Chris Neville. Man, Trevor, it looked like you were about 10 rows back there on the outside. What did you see? Uh, days of thunder smoke, I think. Uh, I wasn't trying to drive through it contrary to where the video looks. I tried to get checked up, and you don't have very good brakes at super speedways. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still. 
it loosened him about actually getting those four sticker tires. He's a little bit loose off the wall. It's his only complaint. They tore a tear off so he can see clearly. And another four tire stop. Vince? Well, the 24 of Chase Elliott, that first run was a little bit snug. Made some track bar adjustments on his car as well. They're going to put just right sides on the 24. Matt, oh, contact with the 24, leaving pit road. Close call there. Meanwhile, Truex's car, they're going to go with a four-tire change. The 21, he was much better firing off after that wedge adjustment. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just gets out of his pit, avoiding Michael McDowell's car. They are servicing McDowell's car while it faces the wrong way because it is parked within his pit stall. So that is legal, but look at the damage to Chase Elliott's number 24. And this is one of the, the, the challenges that comes along with taking two tires. You get in and out of your box while cars are still coming on pit road. Somebody's got to make that call. Let him know he's got to wait for that 95 to come into his box. Before and they he... were so lucky not to hit Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s tire carriers and tire changers right there in the midst of all that. Speed getting into the stall. Yeah, Mike, what you try to do is to find a spot uh, on the wall or, or an opening that you're close to or something that gives you an idea about where you are. Now, there's the incident between Chase Elliott and Michael McDowell. Mc Elliott leaving his pit and McDowell Mm, yeah, a little I'm, displeasure I'm, there, but I'm sorry that was not Michael McDowell's fault. It, it I mean, he, he was coming in and to me, you know, that that's clearing the 24 car of Chase Elliott out of his pit box. That can either be done from the top of the roof by a spotter or by the crew chief on pit road. But they have to be aware, especially when they're taking two tires, to be aware that they have to be very clear of when he can exit. Is the, so it's the responsibility on the car leaving, not the car entering? No, if the car is entering and he's early and he sees that car is going to step out, yes, he can slow down and prevent that from happening. But to me, the 95 was already committed into his pit stall. And at that point, it really was on the 24 car. That's a failure to communicate somewhere. Chase Elliott will pit. Landon Castle, the cause of the caution, is back out there and up to speed. So Ty Dillon continues. Six cars will pit, beginning with Michael McDowell. Cole Witt, Gray Galding, Reed Sorensen, Landon Castle, and Chase Elliott come to pit road. Chase Elliott is back on pit road. He had been under NASCAR's crash clock, the damaged vehicle policy, but he got up to minimum speed, cleared that, and once they did that, now they're free to take their time and make full repairs without being on the crash clock. Yeah, from watching Amendinger, I think he thought he had a flat tire, and I think he's trying to recover here and fill it out. Vince? Yeah, the big issue with the 24 is they just can't get keep the uh, right front fender where they had damage from rubbing that right front tire. This is the second time they've had to come in and actually change the right front since they thought they had it repaired the first time. So uh, the issues continue for the 24. All due to that collision on pit road with Michael McDowell. Very confident coming into this race. And he's saying right now his car, no complaints. It's turning really well. Keep in mind, he's Started this race 31st. He's up there battling for a top five. Kane eighth, going to be side by side with Hamlin for seventh. Hey, you think about some drivers and teams that need a break, need something to go right. They, they... What happened to Jimmy Johnson was that when he and Kurt Busch got together earlier and Johnson's tire went down. Let's check in at the Hollywood Hotel. Chris. All right, thanks, Mike, and, and the crews, everybody concerned about Eric Tunnard, everything in between, visit the shops, get their souvenirs. Uh, I'll tell you, traffic, <laughs> it's going to be busy around, uh, around that area for uh, about the next two weeks. Chase Elliott's already put a check mark next to the first goal for tonight. And that's a solid qualifying effort. He rolls off third. He told me clean air, trap position, that will be key tonight. But the danger zone, he feels like, down in turns three and four. The sun is just beating on the racetrack. Extremely free, edgy, just hanging on. Vince Wells, he thinks it's going to be very treacherous at that end of the racetrack. Segment two. He's not looking ahead right now. He's looking in the rearview mirror because the 77 is closed up on the back of the 21 car, and that's where the race for seconds going to be. Matt? 
Mike Chase Elliott has dropped back to fifth, just telling his team he's on the splitter, especially in the turn one. He's having to back up his entry quite a bit just to get through the corner. Yeah, a lot of these teams, they practice in the heat of the day. The pace is much slower than it is right now. And so they, they're trying to get the heights adjusted just right in that practice. I think they're running just a faster pace. The car's traveling more. Splitter and skirts, all those things are dragging the racetrack. Gamble here. Well, I don't know that he has a good enough race car, and because he's the only one, he is a sitting duck who really hates he's the only one is Chase Elliott in that 24 car because he's going to hold Chase up. Yeah, that's Point. what I see here, Larry. I think that 19 car sitting in the catbird seat right now, get him a good start here, get out there. He could be the man. Great opportunity for Daniel Suarez starting on the outside to Just try and break away. Wondering if Chase may have learned something on that first start of the night when Almendinger went inside him and took him three wide. He might need to do that same thing here to Landon. That's what he's going to have to do if, he, if he's going to win this 10 lap. Watch him go three wide into turn one. 10 laps to go. Green flag laps only count. Green flag. Oh, oh no. Well, Chase Elliott got a boot from Eric Jones and around goes Castle. Well, that's the fear that you have when you have those two tires that you're going to spin the tires really bad. Held up that line and, and it's the open. You got to go. But Chase uh, got inside him. Got some turned damage around. on that right front over there. I don't know how bad that is, but he has some damage. 24 car does. I mean, Landon is well, he's protecting the inside is what he's doing. He knows what's coming. Watch the second and third rows on the inside. There's a lot of action there before we even get down to turn one. Yeah, I think I think that Landon Castle knew what to expect. He knew Chase going to try to go three wide down in the corner down here. He tries to protect that inside. Well, you can see Chase hesitate because he wasn't quite to the start finish line. He realized he couldn't get inside uh, of Landon Castle before that start finish line. That's a rule that NASCAR has. So he hesitated a little bit. Then Eric Jones gave a little nudge to the 24. Landon comes down. They make contact. Around goes the 34. 24 has some damage on the right. I don't think it's significant, it's but there is some damage to the right front of the 24 car. Everyone gets by without incident. The lap does not count. Yeah, I mean, that's just a, a racing incident on a on a restart in a race like this. When you when you take two tires and everybody else has four, you might be setting in danger. All right, so we listened in on team 24. I don't know what they expect. I mean, I'm inside of you. I, mean, I just don't get it. Yeah, I mean, it's like, why am I going to live for you when I'm inside of you, clearly? I mean. well. Good question. Yeah, well. I'm, I'm sure the other side of it from Landon would, would be very similar from his side. <laughs> because too. I'm in front of you would be <laughs> one reason. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly what he said. We see Eric Jones now going to the top side, going to try to make something happen. Whoa, he's there. He's looking. Oh, he's he, right there. He's he looked. He blocked. Whoa. Wow. Man, oh, I don't they think touched. They contact. I don't think he's going to put up with much of that blocking in this race. It sure doesn't look like it. Whoa. Wow. Great job by Daniel Suarez to keep it straight. And Elliott to the lead. Yeah, but here comes it's that 77 over. too. While these two are up here mucking around, here he comes. Those two went for turn three, looking like Donnie and Kale. I think 77 might get them both. Wow, what a run off the corner. Oh, he's in the grass. No. Don't go in the grass. Boy, no. Yeah, he got the splitter. Oh, and he yeah, he messed something up. Under he, the nose. he ruined his car. This thing's right there. on the hose. Oh, by the 77. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He just got off the track. There's this great battle for the lead. Chase Elliott got a big run off of turn four. He was able to draft up behind him, and he gets Whoa, on his side. Look at Suarez. You see his hands on wow. Daniel Suarez be able to correct. Great reflexes. Liked about Chase Elliott. He gave Suarez a chance to get his car back under control. He didn't go in there and just keep driving, driving, driving. He gave him a chance to get back under control. That looked a lot like the pass in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dale Earnhardt mm. Sr., which was not a pass. No, it wasn't. The Elliots will remind you there was an Elliot involved in that one, too. <laughs> yeah. Chase's dad, Bill. 
Yeah, that was before splitters. I, th I think, a lot of things. Yeah, yes. I think uh, Eric Jones was just, he knew he had a car that could have gotten a lead right there if he hadn't gotten off the grass. Let's listen on uh, Chase Elliott. I sure wish we could just get through this deal without any drama one time. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Tell me about it. The Elliots never did like drama. <laughs> a chance watch, to watch get back these, under control. Watch his hands as this unfolds. Touch. We talked about uh, comparing this to the pass in the grass. Watch the three of Dale Earnhardt. Off the front bumper of Bill Elliott. That looked very similar to Daniel Suarez yeah. and Chase Elliott. Sure did. More so than maybe Eric Jones. Well, it ended all right for that guy. We're about to make official the results of the fan voting on NASCAR.com that concluded last night at midnight. Jeff Gordon gets to inform one lucky driver that he's in. Hey, Chase Elliott, this is Jeff up in the FS1 booth. You got me? Well, buddy, I, I know you didn't get in by uh, racing your way in, although you had a great race car and that was one crazy battle, but uh, I am happy to inform you, you did get the fan vote. You're in the all-star race, buddy. Uh, well, I certainly appreciate everybody's vote. That means a lot to me, obviously. Uh... As you are, I'm a racer. We'd love to we'd love to race our way in and, um, and whatnot, but there's a wild one for sure. We'd love to get through without any drama in this one. That'd be, uh, be awesome. But like I say, I appreciate everybody's vote. It means a lot to me, and uh, we'll try to clean it up for tonight. Well, congrats. Maybe you'll go dra drama-free in that all-star race. <laughs> go get them. <laughs> Thanks. All right, drive it to you, garage door now. Daniel Suarez, the winner. Austin Dillon second by 1.0 seconds. Chase Elliott third. Regan Smith finished fourth. Danica Patrick fifth. Ty Dillon. Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway where the stage for driver introductions is being rolled into position. Four drivers have transferred into the all-star race. Clint Boyer, Ryan Blaney, Daniel Suarez winning the three stages and Chase Elliott by the fan vote. They'll move into the all-star race. Matt and Daniel Suarez. Boy, stage three got off to a wild start. Landon Castle had taken just two tires. He spun those on the field trying to stay off. Chase Elliott, Eric Jones had a big run, but got into the grass, and that tore up the front. When will you use them? That's just one of the questions to be answered among the 20 drivers that will compete in the Monster Energy all-star race tonight on FS. It's all coming up right here on FS1. Preparations underway right now, including the four cars that just transferred into the All-Star race being prepared. Clint Boyer, stage one winner. Ryan Blaney, stage two winner. Daniel Suarez captured the checkered flag. And Chase Elliott, the fan vote. They're moving on, and so are we.